Hello everyone, I am Snigdha Bharadwaj, Assistant Professor, ITS College of Pharmacy. I welcome you all in my session. So, uh, in this session, we again will be continuing with the previous topic, one compartment open model, extravascular administration, part 3. So, let us get started. So, we have discussed about extravascular administration how that uh, different uh, plas drug plasma concentration time profile curve have different uh, phases, how we can calculate uh, various pharmacokinetic parameters like C max, T max using different different uh, kinetics and also we have discussed zero order kinetics and first order kinetics in uh, uh, one compartment open model for extravascular administration. So, now uh, after discussing about C max and T max pharmacokinetic parameters, again uh, few uh, parameters to be discussed which are important. So, assessment of pharmacokinetic parameters in our earlier session, we, we have discussed C max uh, and T max as a pharmacokinetic parameter, how it can be assessed. So, uh, uh, now we will be uh, going to discuss about volume of distribution. So, how this is one of important uh, 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 pharmacokinetic parameters in uh, extravascular administration to be calculated, how it is calculated. So, extrapolation of the semi log plot of the plasma drug concentration versus time. So, you just think, uh, uh, you just remember one thing right, that we are always following that plasma concentration curve for while while calculating all these pharmacokinetic parameters. So, this is concentration axis and time axis. So, whenever we talk uh, how to assess various pharmacokinetic parameters, we always uh, take it as a base for calculating these uh, parameters. Okay? So, now volume of distribution extrapolation of the semi log plot of the plasma drug concentration versus time profile as an inter, uh, intercept. So, we will get equation I is equal to K A F X naught V D uh, K A minus K E. So, you remember that uh, Cartesian plot and semi log plot. So, now we are talking about semi log plot. So, V D will be like K A if we simplify or we can write this equation like I is equal to K A F X. So, uh, and V D K A minus K E, K A and K E is the absorption and elimination rate constants respectively. So, V D is equal to K A F X O I K A minus K E. The calculation of the apparent volume of distribution of a drug from the plasma drug concentration time profile data obtained following the first order absorption can be done from when we are talking about extravascular administration of oral preparations. So, uh, that we are saying that the drug is following first order kinetics or absorption rate. So, uh, we in that case how we can calculate volume of distribution using this equation. So, V d is equal to F x o k e a u c naught. So, this is how we can uh, use this equation and after this volume of distribution lag time is also an important part. The time delay prior to commencement of the first order drug absorption is known as lag time. The lag time T1 represents the beginning of the drug absorption. This can be represented by the following equation. The lag time basically the time uh, before that uh, we see that at this point of time we have given this uh, we have given dose and the onset of action will be like using uh, uh, starting from this point. So, this basically this period will be considered as your lag time prior to the absorption time will be like lag time. So, T 1 represent the beginning of the drug absorption this can be represented beginning of the drug onset of uh, uh, action that means drug is going to start uh, absorbing from in, in the systemic circulation. So, the following equation C is equal to K A F X naught divided by V D K A minus K E E to the power K E uh, T minus T 1 and E K to the power T minus T 1. So, this is how 
because we are just we cannot consider it that uh, once we have administered the drug it will start uh, absorbing at that point of time no it will take for example if we give tablets so first that tablet will disintegrate and then dissolute and then going to start absorb so this uh, time of taking uh, you know uh, disintegration time and dissolution part so that will be considered as a lag time before the absorption once it is dissoluted then we can say that star it will start absorbing uh, within the system or systemic it will go into systemic circulation so flip flop of k a and k the estimation of the rate constant for absorption and elimination in some slides it is written k a and k e whereas in some k a and k so k represents uh, elimination constant so uh, this estimation of the rate constant for absorption and elimination by the method of residual yes we have discussed that is based on the assumption that k a is very very higher than elimination rate at the time of uh, uh, in absorption phases when the drug is administered and it is ready to be absorbed at that particular time the absorption rate will be higher than the uh, elimination rate so the terminal phase of the plasma level time curve represent elimination elimination that this part so uh, the uh, elimination and the residual line presents absorption if k is higher than the uh, terminal phase represents what it represents absorption and residual phase represent elimination right so uh, this absorption phase the uh, upward line uh, in the curve uh, will show you the absorption phase whereas the downfall of the that particular continuous line will give you that the elimination will be higher as compared to absorption so absorption and residual phase represent elimination this phenomenon is called that flip flop of the absorption and elimination rate constant most of the drug observed to have flip flop characteristics are drugs with a fast elimination the larger the elimination rate constant of a drug the greater is the chance of the flip flop of k this is basically flip flop uh, most of the drugs given by oral administration you uh, following this flip flop type of kinetics and it uh, basically involves the uh, elimination for higher the elimination rate value higher will be the elimination and uh, those uh, the chances and probability of uh, uh, using this flip flop type of profile will be higher for this particular drug candidates so a special case where k a is equal to k that means absorption rate will be uh, equal to elimination rate a situation may occur where the absorption rate constant and elimination rate constant of a drug are equal at plateau stage for such situation an equation that de describe the time course of the drug concentration pl in plasma is what will be the equation c k f x not t divided by v d e k t so uh, basically in logarithmic form log c is equal to log k f x not t divided by v d k t 2 point divided by 2.303 a plot of log c versus time will be a curve from time 0 to infinity yes uh, you must have remembered that uh, in one of my lecture in this unit uh, we have discussed uh, the different different area under the curve using trapezoidal rule and uh, uh, from time 0 we uh, have calculated uh, the uh, AUC and area under the curve till infinite infinite time and uh, after that uh, we do not have any absorption uh, rate of drug or absorption value of drug only uh, uh, elimination will occur after that so a plot of log c versus time at 0 and infinite uh, because t is present in intercept value which is variable because at a time at time t the value of drug present in plasma will be variable so this is how we can calculate uh, the flip flop ka and uh, 
k the estimation uh, once again I repeat the estimation of the rate constant for absorption and elimination by method of residual is based on the absorption uh, assumption that k is much much higher than k elimination because at the time of absorption phase the absorption uh, is occur only and the elimination will be very low. So, basic uh, the time profile curve uh, what it tells it represent elimination and the residual line represent absorption. So, uh, the time level curve uh, represent elimination like this at this phase is elimination phase and re remaining uh, is your absorption phase. So, this is how we can calculate flip flop type of uh, concentration. Now, absorption rate constant of uh, under extravascular administration. So, where C above with uh, arrow uh, inverted arrow represents backward arrow represents the back extrapolation plasma concentration value. So, if we talk about absorption rate constant uh, till then we are talking about uh, volume of distribution lag time and now we are talking about absorption rate constant. So, how we can solve or we can use equation for that uh, particular calculation of absorption rate constant where uh, C with the backward arrow represent the back extrapolation plasma concentration value subtraction of true plasma concentration values that is equation uh, 15 from the extrapolated plasma concentration values where uh, what we have uh, 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 simplify the equation in our previous sections that the final equation we get for the uh, calculating uh, 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 plasma concentration using the simplified equation. From that equation if we put the C value or we, we put the plasma concentration value and replacing it with the uh, C with backward arrow. So, subtraction of true plasma concentration and the value from the main equation from the extrapolated plasma concentration value C r will be like C uh, with uh, backward arrow minus C is equal to C r is equal to A e to the power minus k t. These are different different kind of uh, mathematical expressions we can change as per our requirement. If we want to calculate the uh, absorption rate constant, so we can simplify the equation and put only uh, the values related to this and if we want to calculate uh, lag time and flip flop type of the calculations or volume of distribution. So, we can change the uh, particulars accordingly. Now, after absorption rate constant uh, we will discuss elimination rate constant extravascular administration. So, the parameter can be computed from the elimination phase of the plasma level time profile. For most drugs administered extravascular absorption rate is significantly greater than the elimination rate. Basically, the parameter can be computed from the elimination phase of the plasma. So, basically if we are talking about elimination rate constant that means, we are taking uh, only elimination part under into consideration. For most drug administered extravascularly, so absorption rate is significantly greater than the uh, elimination rate. Initially, the rate of absorption will be higher than the rate of elimination. So, at such stage when absorption is complete, the change in plasma concentration is depend only on elimination rate. So, at that point after reaching C max no absorption as such will occur. So, only uh, downfall graph you will get that elimination will be taken place. So, uh, the elimination uh, is the key parameter here to identify or to make the drug change amount of drug change in the blood plasma. So, as much as the drug is getting eliminated from the system that means, the drug amount is changing in the blood plasma. So, the it is equation reduces to C is equal to K A F X naught divided by V D K A minus K E to the power minus K E T because K A absorption rate constant is not there only elimination is taking place. So, we have uh, replaced that uh, we have removed that uh, absorption rate constant transforming into log form the equation becomes log C is equal to log K A F X naught divided by V D K 
a minus k e is minus k e t divided by 2.303. So, this is how we can simplify our equations and we can put the desired data to calculate the uh, desired parameter. So, here how the we can uh, use this equation to uh, plot the area plasma concentration time profile after oral administration of a single dose of a drug. The bi exponential curve has been resolved into two components absorption and elimination. So, we have uh, divided this graph into two phases like one is absor for absorption and second one is for elimination. So, you see here this is a logarithmic graph. So, semi log graph. So, this is log c and this is time t. This is lag time uh, for those log a is equal to log k a f x 0 v d k a minus k e. So, you see this formula log c. So, uh, we are uh, uh, taking it for uh, ele calculating elimination rate constant. So, you see log a is equal to this formula back extrapolated terminal portion of curve log c values we can say and true plasma concentration values. So, this solid line gives you the value of true plasma concentrations and whereas, this uh, dashed line show you the backward arrow uh, uh, c values that is back extrapolated terminal portion of curve. So, this will give you log c values. This shows the residual curve for log c r values, residual curve for absorbing drug to be absorbed that means, the drug to be uh, remaining to be absorbed and this is lag time and how this is your linear line shows the slope. So, the final equation to calculate uh, we get from this curve is log c uh, log a uh, is equal to log a with sigma sign and uh, minus k e t 2.303. So, this is basically your c r and the backward c uh, values uh, uh, compiled form. So, you see here that absorption rate constant with this equation and elimination rate constant with this equation, you can easily calculate uh, 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 or extrapolate the uh, values in this semi logarithmic curve, logarithmic curve. So, this is how you get dif different different uh, uh, lines and they have different different significance in the graphs. That means, this point shows the uh, 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 elimination rate constant value this is your portion remaining portion and this is your true plasma concentration curve well uh, readings a u c residual curve line and slope slope again using this slope is for uh, absorption rate constant and this slope is called for uh, elimination rate constant. So, both the things elimination rate constant and absorption rate constant you can put in one plot. So, this is how you calculate uh, uh, all these uh, parameters using this uh, uh, using this uh, uh, graph. Now, oral administration of drug unchanged drug in urine till now we have been discussing about the drug administration and drug absorption and elimination through blood and blood plasma. Now, we will talk about oral administration of drug uh, unchanged drug in urine right. So, how we can calculate? So, also the drug can be uh, you know available in urine and uh, excreted through urine right. So, uh, how we can calculate the amount of drug uh, excreted from the urine? So, excretion rate method is followed for identify uh, unchanged drug in urine. The amount of the drug unchanged excreted in urine is only dependent on the amount of drug unchanged drug in the body. Yes, whatever the um, unchanged drug uh, is remaining in the body or an other compartments and components. So, it will be excreted through urine. Uh, if it is available 30 percent, so only 30 percent will be uh, coming or excreting through urine. Right? The rate of urinary excretion of the unchanged drug is given by d x u by d t k e x. 
so k e represent elimination because there is no point of absorption only drug is eliminating from the system right first it is it has been absorbed now distributed and now it is getting eliminated so uh, x is equal to k a f x not uh, divided by k a minus k e e minus k t and e to the power minus k e t so uh, but this equation we got earlier from the presence of drug in plasma from the earlier uh, derivations so now substituting two equation second equation into one so dx u by dt will become how you will identify how much drug is remaining to be eliminated so using those earlier equations of uh, drug amount uh, uh, to be eliminated or present in blood plasma we can easily get the idea uh, the how this much is uh, you know uh, present in systemic circulation and this much will be eliminated through urine or excreted right so substituting that uh, initial equation second equation in one d x u by d t k e k a f x so k e k a minus k e so equation will be like this the rate of urinary, uh, urinary drug excretion d x u by d t cannot be determined directly it cannot be determined directly so x u by t is used which is the average rate of uni, urinary drug excretion at the midpoint of urine collection period so we have to collect uh, urine samples at different time intervals to identify uh, the different uh, uh, you know uh, the identify the uh, unchanged drug amount in the particular sample and then we take the average value uh, the total cumulative values in uh, 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 summing by summing up all the samples amount and, uh, and ha having a exact amount of drug present in uh, excreted through urine. So, that is why d x u d t cannot be determined directly at one point of time. So, we have to take multiple samples. So, this is why the value will be changed to x u by t well, at times right which is the average rate of urinary drug excretion at the midpoint of urine collection period t. Therefore, uh, delta x u by delta t is equal to k e k a f x naught divided by k a minus k e e to the power k t minus e to the power k a t. So, in logarithmic form log delta x u by delta t is equal to log k e k a f x naught divided by k a minus k e uh, and the whole minus k t divided by 2.303. So, this is how we calculate the drug excreted unchanged in urine using this. Now, again the second method is sigma minus, uh, sigma minus method. The cumulative amount of the unchanged drug excreted in urine up to any time can be obtained by the following equation. This equation is x u t is equal to k e f x naught divided by k plus k e k a f x naught divided by k a e k a t by k a minus e to the power minus k t by k. At t infinite time equation reduces to x u infinite is equal to k e f x naught by k. So, uh, where the k u is the total amount of drug unchanged excreted in unit at infinite time. So, this is how we calculate uh, how the drug uh, can be identified assessed in uh, urine unchanged uh, using these two methods. So, what are the advantages of this uh, one compartment model for extravascular administration? It is a simple and flexible approach, visual representation of various rate processes involved in drug deposition it shows how many rate constants are necessary to describe these processes. We have absorption rate constant, elimination rate constants. So, these all are important to identifying uh, these processes. It is useful in predicting drug concentration time profile in both normal physiologic and in pathologic condition. Of course, the patient having any disease condition can also be analyzed for these parameters and we can also uh, compare 
the normal physiology uh, with the pathological condition that if the patient is having this type of disease that the drug pharmacokinetic may be hampered or affected in that case. It is important in the development of dosage uh, regimens. So, uh, it is very important to identify the drug amount basically. So, what type of uh, drug based on the nature of drug, its potency and uh, how it is behaving in the within the body systems and how it is bind, how uh, it affecting, it affects binding right. So, all these parameters needs to be considered by giving the uh, uh, designing these doses regimens and also uh, to assess these pharmacokinetic parameters. So, uh, the, 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 these are disadvantages, no relationship with the physiological functions or anatomy structures of the species, extensive efforts are required in the development of exact model, it is very uh, you know tedious job to identify these parameters as exact value will not uh, be obtained. The model may vary within a study population, yes physiological variations are there, compartment model may change with route of administration, difficulties generally arise when using models to interpret because uh, what we have said theoretically, it is uh, very hard to achieve experimentally as it is. So, these are references and I hope uh, you understand uh, the basics of uh, these one compartment open model. Uh, for IV bolus, IV infusion and extravascular administration. So, in our next session, uh, we will be continuing with that unit third topics. Till then, take care and stay safe. Thank you.